Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we're going to be bringing you a fish that's a little bit uncommon for us. Most of what we do when we talk about fish are cichlids from Africa, from South America, Central America, we love them. But we do keep other types of fish. Today we're going to be looking at the guppy. It's a fish that's very common in the hobby. You can find them at fish pet stores. Uh, there are many different types of strains. Some of them are relatively cheap, some of them are super expensive. But we wanted to show you how we care for them, how we breed them, and I think we've got a couple of interesting strains that, I, that you'll like to see. So stay tuned and we'll show you what we got. So here we've got one of our guppy setups. This is a 20 gallon standard tank. Got a lot of guppy grass in here. We'll get to that in a minute. You're looking at a male, which I believe may be a cross between a guppy and possibly an endler at some point. It's not something that we crossed. We actually got these guppies from our local uh, club, Greenwater Aquarius Society. And it's a very interesting mix that the males have more of an endler look while they still have the fancy guppy tails. So uh, guppies come from all over the place, all over South, Central, North America. You can almost find them now in any fresh water system around the world. As long as the water temperature is conducive to their growth, they were most likely going to be okay there. Uh, scientific name is Poicilia reticulata, and it is... It's a very common fish, as I think most of us know. Uh, the water systems can vary from one location to the next, uh, but the pH generally stays fairly neutral, maybe a little bit on the higher side, and water hardness, uh, that's something that they like. And so again, I've mentioned many times before, the TDS in our water is close to 200 total dis dissolved solids. Again, that doesn't give us the whole picture, but it gives you an idea of how much stuff is in the water. What that stuff is, is still, you can't determine it from TDS. Uh, these fish are, are great in terms of size. They're gonna, you know, anywhere between an inch, inch and a half, maybe slightly bigger. Uh, the females tend to be larger. They tend to be more rounded, where the males are gonna be a little bit more elongated, not grow quite as large. And the cool thing about guppies is there are it seems like a million different combinations and so what you're looking at here these are just some mixed guppies that we got and we're getting a fair amount of color variation you can see here kind of the more maroon um, tails but then we're getting like the endler colors on the bodies the females have been either uh, kind of silvery in the body or they're more of a, a light yellow color and again, we're getting color variation in their tails anywhere from this darker color that you see here, that's a male, uh, to you know a light orange. So there's, there's obviously a number of genes that are contributing to color in the strains that we have here, but there are a lot of different strains, a lot of different color variations, a lot of different tail patterns, and we don't, I don't really wanna get into all that right now, uh, but you do have some variety. Right here, we're looking at our pink flamingo guppy line that we got from Mike at uh, the Greenwater Aquarius Society, and these fish have been awesome. Love the colors, love the fins. Uh, we're really happy to have them. They're breeding like crazy. We'll get more into that in a few minutes. But, you know, guppies, if you go to a pet store often, you know, you might find them for three, four bucks a piece. Sometimes you'll find them on sale for a dollar. Uh, you can have guppies where you might be paying 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars or more for a trio. So it really depends on how rare the guppies are and what you're looking for. Now, the nice thing about them is their temperament is awesome. Uh, they are generally very peaceful fish. They don't tend to bother lots of other types of fish. Males will get a little bit aggressive with the females. They will constantly, as you can see in this video, constantly harass the females in uh, trying to mate with them. So it's best if you're going to keep guppies like this. Ideally, you'd have at least two or three females for every male to kind of spread out that harassment by the male uh, a little bit more evenly so that we don't have one female just exhausted constantly trying to get away from a male that wants to breed. Uh, other tank baits, they need to be peaceful and they need to be fish that aren't going to be nipping at fins. And you know, some things that come to mind are some of the more smaller docile tetras. Uh, we've had luck keeping these guys with neons, cardinal tetras, rummy nose, uh, maybe a small honey garami. Cory cats are an awesome option, as our bristle nose will do fine. Otosynclus work, harlequin rasboras may work. These fish can go with shrimp, although if you're trying to breed shrimp, they may pick off the shrimplets. But if that's not a primary concern, you could certainly put these guys with shrimp. Uh, snails would be another one. So 
the, the key here is when you're keeping guppies, keep them with fish that are going to be on the very, you know, not very aggressive at all. And certainly not fish that are going to want to attack their fins because the males, they're not very fast. In fact, guppies in general aren't very fast. And when you've got males with long fins, uh, they're going to be even more, they're, they're going to be more challenged in getting away from other fish. Now, in terms of how we've set these tanks up water parameter wise, temperatures, we've had really good luck keeping them somewhere in the 76 to 78, 79 degrees. Uh, they're happy there. They're breeding there. Uh, pH for us, we luck out. These fish like a higher pH and harder water. So our pH is right around an 881 out of the tap. They're loving it. Uh, again, the TDS is around 200. They like that as well. They like that harder water. Uh, water quality. You know, again, you want to keep up with your your water quality. And so your nitrate somewhere between 20 and 40 parts per million would be ideal. And all of our tanks are generally right around that. Uh, I would say these are average fish when it comes to water quality. Feeding them is definitely not a difficult process. They eat flake food. They'll eat all types of frozen foods and pelleted foods, provided that the food's small enough that they can actually eat. Uh, I do like to feed my guppies live baby brine shrimp just because I have, uh, I'm hatching it out twice a day anyway, and they really love this stuff, and the babies like it as well. Now, tank size, uh, the nice thing about guppies is you can stay on the smaller side when it comes to fish tank. You know, um, I could see a five and a half gallon being possibly okay for a trio. I could see a 10, a 10 gallon being great for a small group of guppies. And, you know, once you get beyond that, you can have more. The guppies that we have that you're seeing are all in 20 gallons. So whether it's a 20 high or a 20 long, and it's working out fine. Um, they're reproducing. We've got a pretty good group in both tanks, and we're not having any issues. Uh, you know, the decor, you can see from this one, uh, this tank, we've got a ton of guppy grass in here. And that guppy grass is to protect the fry, uh, to keep the, the, the fry from getting eaten by the parents. But, you know... Um, Driftwood, plants are great, so if you wanted to have a nice planted tank, guppies would be a great addition because they're not going to destroy your plants, they're not going to eat the plants, they're not going to rip up the substrate. So you could definitely do a nice planted tank with guppies. Uh, they're not really picky when it comes to the decor. Now in terms of breeding, I've already kind of mentioned a few things, and that is ideally you're going to want to be somewhere in the one male to two or three female ratio that's going to keep the male busy it's going to keep the females from getting exhausted while they're trying to get away from the male and his breeding um, the male has a specialized structure called a gonopodium and he's going to insert that into the female it's internal fertilization he's going to pass the spermatozoa which is kind of like a, a sperm packet and the female is going to become impregnated and the female will take about three to four weeks to develop the fry internally, and then they release live-born fish. So they're live bearers. They're not, they're not egg layers or anything like that. Now, the female, once they are impregnated, they may release two or three fry every few days. It depends on the environment. It depends on how much food they're getting, uh, how comfortable they are. I know our females, that's about what they're doing. It seems like every few days I'm finding two or three tiny little fry at the top of the tank. But, and they can hold those fry for, or hold the sperm for quite some time. Uh, now, there is no parental care for the fry so that's something to think about it's one of the reasons why you see so much guppy grass in our tanks and even that 20 long we've got some hornwort floating up there we've got some water wisteria floating up there because i have found the fry like to hang out at the very top of the tank and so if i can get some cover up there for them the parents tend to leave them alone if you've got nothing in the tank there's a chance that the parents may eat them now we are finding that especially with the red flamingos i feed them well they're leaving the babies alone. As you can see from the video, there's 17, 18, 19 uh, baby fish in there, juveniles and, and fry, and we're not getting any loss that I can see. So feeding plays a big part in whether or not the parents are going to prey on the, on the fry. Feeding the fry is generally pretty easy to do. Uh, crushed flake will work. Uh, live baby brine shrimp, they love it. I have found that in a guppy tank, if you've got a little bit of algae growth on some of the surfaces, the rocks, maybe like the back of the tank or the side, uh, they'll eat it. 
In fact, I put some guppies in our Bolivian ram tank to kind of take care of some of the, the green uh, hair algae that we were dealing with. And they've been eating that from time to time because it's definitely being removed. Uh, although I don't necessarily see them eating it, it's not as, as predominant as it was in the past. So these are great fish. Guppies are awesome. You're going to get a lot of color, potentially a lot of color variation. They're peaceful. They're not going to go you know, running around destroying other fish in the tank. And the other thing that's cool is they're active in all parts of the tank. As you can see from the video, they'll be at the top. They'll be midwater. They'll pick through the gravel looking for stuff. Uh, they do eat some algae. And we had a 20-gallon or we have a 20-gallon planted tank in our living room. That And the back wall is, is kind of like a rock wall. And it was covered with green algae. I put some guppies in there. And within three days, they had picked off almost all of that algae. So they will eat some algae. I'm not going to say that they're going to go and eat all the brown diatom algae or anything like that. But they do eat some algae. I think if there are any challenges with this fish, it may come from, a, from the source where you're buying them. Uh, we had really terrible luck with guppies when we were buying them from the local, you know, the big box stores, the chain stores. And it was it was getting to the point where I was wondering if I could actually keep guppies alive. And it was bothering me. And then we went out and we got some guppies from our club and we have had awesome luck. We're, we're not getting the die-offs anymore. They're, they're reproducing like crazy. So you have to be careful of where you get them. I think sometimes, uh, at least for us, we've had really bad luck with large chain store guppies, but the guppies we're getting from clubs have been awesome so there you have the guppy it's a great community fish and i think it's something that a lot of people can enjoy all right so i hope you enjoyed that again it's the guppy's a great fish it's great for the beginner and it's great even for the advanced hobbyist who's looking to get into different strains and possibly looking into breed in certain characteristics into a line and develop their own line so it's something i think can fit in just about any stage of the hobby we enjoy ours it's something i think we'll keep for a while so if you like this video share subscribe and we'll see you in the next one